Hello, it's Rachel Larson here again from the Drupal Association. And today I've managed to bring back some of the initiative leads from the Automated Updates Strategic Initiative team. So today we have David, we have Ted, and we have Tim with us. Um, so welcome everyone. Thank you for coming back. Yeah, thanks for having us again. Yeah, thanks for having us. Well, Thank you. great. So I wanted to ask a few questions about what, you know, what's been going on and uh, so on with automated updates. And I thought I'd start off with a really easy one. So we've all had a few weeks after DrupalCon now, which was pretty intense. And I don't know, what have you been up to since then? Uh, Ted? Yeah, we've been, uh, we finished some issues from the contribution day. We got some people involved. So that sort of led to some work. Uh, in the week or two after that, um, actually, we found like a really good sort of sort of security related. I mean, I guess with automatic updates, everything's security related, but um, security issue somebody pointed out on contribution day. So we were working on that, and um, yeah, just uh, sort of pushing pushing forward on the core stuff and the libraries. So yeah, it was good to get people involved in the contribution day. Yeah, oh, that's and great. I, and I think um, you know after taking a long weekend post con to, to chill out for a little bit and recharge the batteries. The other thing that was uh, really big is, um, you know, the announcement of the new initiative for the uh, project browser at DrupalCon was a really big deal. And, you know, Dries had mentioned that uh, the work that the auto updates initiative is doing lays some groundwork for that. So for myself, um, I had a lot of folks chiming in asking about that project browser initiative and you know, how what we're doing in auto updates affects the composer side of all that kind of stuff. So there was a nice little opportunity to cross pollinate with a, a new initiative getting started. Yeah. Okay, so you talked about Drupal, DrupalCon there. We changed quite a lot at DrupalCon North America this year. We, you know, we, we changed it so that everything was far more focused on the strategic initiatives that we selected, including automated updates. I'm really bringing them into focus. Now, what was it like for you leading a strategic initiative to have to organize a keynote, choose sessions throughout the day, be there to help organize the contributions in the afternoon and everything? That was quite a big deal that you went through to do that. Uh, any lessons learned? What was the experience like, um, Tim? Yeah, let me start from kind of the overview. Um, I mean, first of all, I think big kudos to Ted, who did a lot of the actual groundwork in terms of building the keynote and um, and doing some of the key session selection and all the things that you described. I think of the folks of us involved, Ted did a large chunk of those. But stepping back a little bit, you know, the the main thing I observed is that it's a lot of work, um, and we knew that going in. But it's a huge amount of work for for everybody involved. Um, and you know the worry was, is this going to distract from executing on the initiative from the time we would spend just getting things done? And you know maybe that's true to a certain extent, but the value of getting organized and actually doing that issue triage to see where we are and what needs contribution next, and um, you know getting ready for recruitment, I think was really high. I mean, I think it's super helpful to be able to communicate with folks. Um, the state of where things are and to have things available for people to chime in and, and help us work on. So I'd love to do it again, but I, I would think that we could expand further into, you know, recruiting a DrupalCon project manager or something to help all of us out um, uh, for the initiative on top of our mentoring uh, partner and everyone else who joined in. So it might help us out a little bit. I don't know. What did you think, Ted? Yeah, I think it was good. I think it was interesting to have the keynote which was sort of very general, but not really assuming much like technical knowledge and then have a separate um, session for the technical stuff, which the people who are involved in the various parts of the initiative, you know, sort of spoke to um, where if people did want, because a lot of people obviously aren't, they're maybe interested in auto updates, but they don't really, if they're not going to work on it, um, they're maybe not interested in the real details. Um, so it was good to have a separate sessions for the like why and then, then the how details. So it was, um, and I think it was also good to have sort of everybody involved in helping with the slides for both of the, those sessions so that 
we could sort of um, <clears throat> so that they're accurate, the people involved are are updating them, but also so that if you're not involved in that particular section, even if you're in the initiative, sort of seeing the slides keeps you update with where the state of everything is. Um, yeah, I think that's a good point. It's a nice chance to like take the take the blinders off for a minute and look at the big picture again, which is something that actually you kind of run away from when you get laser focused on a specific component of the initiative. David, you also invited um, the the sort of PHP tough team. Um, the tough team. Oh, sorry, excuse me, the tough team, since we're the PHP <laughs> tough team. Um, but, <laughs> Could, could you could you speak to that a little bit? It turned out to be a really good opportunity. Well, um, we're we're working on similar challenges um, in the sense of how do you manage trust with modern encryption, portable implementations of this sort of infrastructure, and be and have infrastructure that is designed to support incremental deployment and increase in the trust. In the sense that a lot of infrastructures sort of. Uh, involve you committing from day one of exactly what scale of trust you're going to be able to support with that infrastructure. And one of the things that has always impressed me about Tuff is that we can do everything from supporting the last mile of trust to provide compatibility to, um, to broad versions of PHP and web hosts that may or may not be fully up to date in their own internal infrastructure for things like like open SSL and certificate authorities. But we can also stretch that all the way back to development if we want to, in the sense that once Tuff is deployed, we could even be signing things like possibly Drupal releases themselves before they're pack like as they're packaged before they're even uploaded to infrastructure. Um, and the and the design of Tuff supports mirroring um, really effectively and means that we actually can validate our implementation against a different reference implementation. And whenever you're dealing with security sensitive topics, it's good to have additional eyeballs on it, um, a design that's actually been vetted by a lot of people in the sense that we're mostly worried about security issues in the gap between the spec and our implementation, not also in the spec itself. Um, and, and so this, this takes a good number of, uh, of risks off of Drupal's plate um, in terms of this. And honestly, it, it's just been a pleasure working with them. Like, yeah. they, um, like they're, they're just like, they've been really courteous in providing us assistance, pointing out, um, any deficiencies from their perspective in our implementation or common pitfalls. Uh, they've also been responsive to our needs on the project. Like when I was yeah. setting up the testing infrastructure and wanting to have that work deterministically, it actually required um, um, some advice and possibly some changes even upstream. And, and they're actually pretty sympathetic to these needs. Um, so, um, and on their side, they actually get the benefit of another implementation of a spec. Um, I believe this is the third implementation. And if anyone has had heard the like rule of thumb about specs, like it's not a real spec until you've implemented it three times. There's the reference in, in, in Python, the um, second one in Go, and then uh, this one in PHP now. Well, I've never heard that before, but it's, I, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've learned something new already. So you went through this experience, intense, concentrated time. Did that experience change anything about the initiative direction? Is that the same as before? Did you gain input from people you didn't expect or maybe even brought in some new team members? I don't know. David, anything come up in mind that makes you think? Well, there's, there's a lot of opportunities for initiatives at DrupalCon beyond just sharing sort of status updates and an overall perspective on where things are at. Uh, I think DrupalCon is best seen as a bi-directional experience for initiatives in the sense that it's a chance to interact with the community, a chance to interact with other stakeholders, especially ones that are not directly involved with the implementation of it, which are really the important stakeholders to consider because um, the, the people who are implementing this, this sort of integration with Composer actually don't overlap necessarily a ton with people deploying Drupal in situations that are going to most benefit from auto updates because we're trying to target the long tail of deployments. Um, it's also an opportunity for us to onboard potential contributors because sometimes there's 
a, a noticeable barrier to entry of actually getting some things done. And no one wants to show up to try and get something done and then run into um, a blocker and not really, and, and sort of be lost on that or have to wait days to, to have it unblocked because the enthusiasm has dissipated by that point um, when, when that sort of um, situation happens. So it can be great to have an opportunity where you not you don't just have um, sort of entry level issues that are intended to provide an on ramp into the project, but actually the project team around ready to um, catalyze getting past them so that um, someone feels productive and appreciated. And like, there's also no nothing like the nothing quite as neat as the feeling of having your first contribution to a project integrated because it's it's sort of like you've gone through the whole cycle at that point and um the um it, it's it provides a lot of confidence in being able to make other changes and contribute other ways yeah i would say there's only one thing better than watching that first contribution get get you get used and that's mentoring someone to getting that first contribution implemented because that is incredible i've got to say i i was watching this video um from um uh, i believe a video game designer on what he likes about playing games especially ones that you can only play once um because they provide that first unique experience but he also said like the second best experience is to watch someone else have that first experience yeah <laughs> it's really true <laughs> Um, I think, you know, speaking of some specific things, what, one of the things that's really cool is I think we have maybe 40 new people who joined the auto updates channel in Drupal Slack to follow along. 40? Yeah, you know, they're not all people who are actively contributing, but they jumped into the channel at least just to stay and stay, you know, uh, abreast of what's going on, um, uh, which is really good. We also had a great meeting about the UX of, of the auto update system that followed DrupalCon. Um, which was really a, a key feature because we've got a lot of very dev oriented folks, but this is a feature that needs to be really transparent and easy to use in yeah. order to get the option that's important to it. So, no, those were some, some really good outcomes. It, it's funny you should say that people coming into the channel and just kind of watching because I've just come from another webinar uh, a few moments ago uh, about open social and what we were talking there about was how we noticed in some of the contribution sessions, we had quite a few people who were acting simply as flies on the wall. They were just watching what was going on. And that's great that we were able to facilitate that because it gives us an opportunity. It means that some people can come along, not necessarily be active, but just see what's going on. And maybe next time, or maybe the time after that, they will then become the active person. So we're giving them a much smoother on-ramp, um, which is it's really interesting, actually. Things that I hadn't thought of before we got involved in uh, Drupal Concert. I'm really pleased. So I should move on a little bit. So looking into the future, what's, what's next for automated updates? Uh, anything on your mind, Ted? Yeah, so since DrupalCon, we got the um, security advisor, highly critical security advisories notification inside Drupal core. So now if there's a really not like every advisory, but if there's a really highly critical one um, that comes around inside Drupal core, you'll be notified to say, hey, you know, there'll be something coming up very soon. Or there's a, you know, a highly critical security release for something that you have installed that you should do right now. Um, and we're working on a follow-up to that to make have email notifications. Um, we've been working a lot on the PHP Tough library, um, and we have it sort of um, getting it to the latest version of, of their, their spec specification and working on a lot of testing for different kinds of attacks. Um, basically, you know, we, we don't want to just make sure it works if everything's okay. We want to make sure, you know, if, if if something goes wrong that you're notified and you don't you don't actually try to update. So there's been a lot of progress on that. Um, we have our, the readiness checkers, which will be the first thing hopefully to get into core for automatic updates. And that's pretty far along. And after that, we'll have, that's just sort of the API for that. But after that patch gets in the merge request, 
then we'll have all the different like checkers, like is your composer JSON not hacked? Do you have file permissions? So there'll be a lot of sort of smaller issues after that one's in that people can help out with. And a lot of that will be moving the work from the contrib module to core. So yeah, a lot of good progress. Some stuff actually got into core and uh, yeah, it's been good. Great. And if people are wanting to watch out for those opportunities, uh -huh. where can they watch out for them? Um, so on the Drupal core issue queue, if there, if you look for issues tag with uh, automatic updates initiative, right now there's not an automatic updates module because that first thing is not in. Once that's in, you'll you can filter by the automatic updates module. But before then, I'll look for that tag. Or if you go to our GitHub um, PHP tough PHP dash tough organization, there's three active libraries there and so you can sort of jump in and look at the issues there and of course the uh pound auto updates on drupal slack and we have the bi-weekly meeting which i think the next one is next tuesday um if people want to um come i don't actually know yeah. the time but you don't have to show up right then you can sort of see it after the fact too yeah it's an asynchronous text-based meeting like many of the other initiatives so you can join whenever makes sense and um, and just chime in on the topics that are important to you. Right, oh, well, that's wonderful. So I will finish with a question that I've been asking all of the different initiative teams, which is if we had another initiative focused contribution event into the future, which initiative, either a current one or a new one that you've just thought of would you like to see us focus on? This is such a good question. Um, I'm interested, obviously the project browser as it because it really relates here, but also I think if, if there was um, sort of meta, but like a sort of initiative to make it, and I think in the Dries note, it went over this a lot, like initiative to make it easier to contribute, to, to contribute, you know, um, and a lot of that the DA is doing, but um, I think there's a lot of room for a lot of people to help, whether it's like documentation, just to be like, okay, where do you start? Um, so I think that would be interesting. I love that idea. And I think, you know, going together with that, um, you know, if we had this, well, I don't know what we call it, the, the contribution initiative or the uh, initiative initiative, like, <laughs> You know, having something where we could recruit more folks to support the mentor team, recruit folks to do what I was talking about earlier in terms of like helping project manage the contribution event for an initiative. Um, you know, ex expand the, you know, all of the teams that, that presented at the last DrupalCon did some awesome things. And I think taking those and standardizing them and documenting them, it would be really, really cool. Um, yeah, I think that's awesome. Um, I guess I can't just write on Ted's coattails. What else would I would I try and add as a new initiative? Um, I think it would be interesting to see almost a new version. Uh, well, not exactly a new version of the decoupled initiative, but a almost like a a speculative speculative fiction initiative about what could Drupal do in with you know 10 years from now with whatever the next set of digital experiences mean right we've, we've just seen people start to do voice integration with drupal yeah it's one of the very very early like sort of next gen implementations um it would be cool to have a whole group of people just literally speculating about what do we need to account for in terms of the the sci-fi future of what drupal could do that would be really interesting actually yeah. Well, thank you very much. That was really interesting. And yet again, I've learned something during one of these. So I'm happy. Uh, I'm just going to keep doing these. I'll know so is, stuff by the end of it. <laughs> is there uh, is there still time for me to opine on some initiatives? Yes, absolutely there is. OK. Yes. Um, so uh, I, I have I have sort of my my like loftier one and my like very concrete one. Um, loftier, I'm actually 
totally on board with um, the direction that um, Dries is, is indicating in terms of some of the more like the project selection. And the reason why I think that that is a really important one for us to be pushing forward on now is because the plumbing we're adding with auto updates actually provides a really robust package manager for doing interactive changes to a site to install additional modules and their dependencies. And it would be a shame if we only use that for automatic updates. Um, so like <laughs> I, uh, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about the idea of being able to support a more, a, a richer experience in general of being able to install and extend Drupal um, uh, that supports that. Uh, I also have something I worked on years ago that I would love to see a little initiative done around. Um, I just put the link into the chat for here. Um, it's a project I worked on called Lightfoot and it move, it basically makes um, CSS and JavaScript aggregation happen on a lazy basis um, uh, oh. in a way where um, it uses, it does, it digitally signs, or actually I think HMAX, the, um, the combination that needs to be aggregated and therefore allows the aggregated content to be assembled on demand at the at the request of that aggregated content, which means it doesn't have to write any CSS or JavaScript aggregated files to the file system. And then it caches, cool. it caches the aggregated thing in um, like a reverse proxy cache or even Drupal's page cache. Ah, that's really, yeah. huh, oh. very cool. Yeah, that would be, I'm trying to imagine the complexity of that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I did it. <laughs> it, it is like this. Um, it, um, it actually, the, the, the Drupal 7 implementation is is um, actually very dirty because like the way it's, it basically does, you know, that sort of thing where it like has a hook and then it ma manipulates the data in it. Um, the Drupal 8 implementation is actually fairly clean um, that I did for it. And I suspect it would be fairly clean in, in 9 as well because it basically just changes the handler in, in a more OO way. Um, actually, next steps on here, one, two, three, four, I actually had Drupal 8 core. I haven't touched this since 2017, but it's the sort of thing that um, I'd love to actually integrate um, at some point. I'd love to do it possibly along the same lines as uh, providing a mode for image styles that um, does not write the disk either. Because like, what I'd like to see is for all of this derivative content to be cached in a reverse proxy or CDN layer, um, which is more consistent with the ways that um, that people are deploying things today, um, yeah. rather than writing it to the file system, especially a network file system that then has to be synchronized uh, across the nodes super fast. Um, so this would, it, it's, um, so yeah, I, I guess that's my little pet, like I guess self-contained little technical initiative that I would love to see. Yeah, now now the more you talk about it, I'm really thinking that we write the things to the disk, both image styles, JavaScript, CSS. We are really using them as a cache. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and yet we're sat with a frankly better cache nearby. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it completely makes sense now. Now I've now I've had a chance to absorb it. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Sounds really interesting. Brilliant. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> not one that I thought about before. Right. Well, thank you very much. Have thank you. Things. Yeah. And uh, look forward to seeing you in the auto updates channel on Slack for the meetings. And uh, the next time that you're all getting together to push the project forward. So thank you very much. Goodbye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Thank you.